guy. I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to talk. Um, I have a female friend who's borderline, who, who's diagnosed borderline and has done nothing about it. Okay. She tells me that she can't. Her father's a narcissist and she just can't escape him. She depends on him and that's it. I just tell you that we're so similar in so many ways and the more I discover our similarities the more I'm shocked to tell you the truth she's a very pretty girl she's a tall blonde good body just a nice sexy girl you know definitely attractive she's been single like like me her whole life she's had boyfriends here and there but they never last and it's always chaotic always ends up with the cops dragging him away or dragging her away or something I mean the similarities between her relationships and mine are uncanny um, the only difference is that I'm the man and so the guys she gets involved with are often a little worse than I ever was but that's only my perception. When I was a younger man of 20s, I may have been perceived as a lot worse than I remember myself as. But anyhow, so she has, so, you know, you see this girl, she's attractive, and she has all these guys. You would think she's having a lot of sex, but she's not, she's like me. She only has sex with guys she really likes and she really cares about. And it's surprising whenever we talk about it. I'm always like, geez, it's crazy. I'm saying you're, it's like she's going to waste. Sometimes I feel the same way about me. It's like I'm a young man. I'm very uh, horny, I guess the word. Is there another word? Easily aroused? I don't know. I love women. But it's like... This borderline keeps me from engaging in a healthy manner. So, besides that, I've noticed, and this is something that the reason why I'm recording this video is because I said in my last video how I have not done hard drugs in a year and a half because I, I feel like I don't have anything to escape. Well, I'm speaking to her about maybe it's two, three weeks now. I see her in the park. And she's... Uh, She's looking for a place to live, again. She's always looking for a place to live. She's always moving from place to place. She can't last, for whatever reason. There's, there's every reason. And I tell her, I said, well look, I already offered you. I know you're crazy. You know I'm crazy. You know, we can, I feel completely uh, comfortable around you, like, <clears throat> we know each other for years. Why don't we move in together? I said, I, I can deal with your, I don't care how crazy it gets here. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that. That would be, Pretty okay with for me, you know. I'm I'm used to it. I, I because the benefit would be that I get a bigger place. I'd have my own. I have a much bigger place if I shared. I'd be able to get pets. She has a dog and a cat, and I would love to live with her dog. I love her pets, and she cooks. You know, I I, don't, I would think that would be really good. You know, I wouldn't mind. And uh, so she gets into it. She's always oh, she goes. That's really good. I go. She goes, that's, we should really do that. And I go, when are you moving? And then I say, well, it wouldn't be for at least a few months. And then because it's, there's not an immediate satisfactory goal for her, right away she switches to the story about how she met this young guy on the street earlier in the day, and he was smoking crack, and he offered her a hit, so she took it on the street. And then he tried to kiss her, so she just kissed him a little bit to give him a little thrill, and then she left. And uh, she wonders if, she's, if he's still there again, and then he paged her, and she's going, I don't know what I should do with this guy. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is, like, she uses this drugs and this whole, like, immaturity as a way to escape the reality that she doesn't have a place to live. She, and in order to get a place to live where she would be happy, she has to actually wait and she has to actually control herself and plan. And like I told you many times, it's very hard for us to do that kind of stuff. So she just gives up right away. And I noticed that, I'm like, wow, every time I'm talking to her and it gets serious, 
unless it's immediate gratification, she just changes the conversation to something that's like crazy. She brings up a story about like some arrest or some some like an insane story, like the kind of stuff I tell you. But she brings it up at the most inopportune situations. It's almost slow. It's not almost. It's exactly like she's using. like the crazy life to escape dealing with her life on a slow, steady, organized fashion. I guess that's exactly what I've done. I guess, you know what, I guess that's why I see her and I see me and I go, man, I see what she needs. She needs to get away from her father and get away from everyone and just like, it's, it's so hard, you know what I mean? But I did it somehow, and I was able to rebuild. It took me so long, guys, like I to figure out which food I like to eat, where to buy it, when the specials are. I mean, there's a lot to living that. There's a lot of skills that you need to accumulate or at least marry someone who knows, who knows how to do it. Like, I think that's why couples usually will work good together, you know, sometimes, because each knows something about the world the other one doesn't but uh, when, you, when you're single you kind of have to figure it all out yourself especially when you've had parents who didn't really teach you much because they didn't know I don't even know what did I just talk about oh yeah that's my borderline friend oh my god I haven't been this fucking depressed in ages man Oh yeah, can I tell you guys something with the false self? I had this one that I'm like, shit, those fucking losers. I'm thinking about serial killers the other day. Ser the real serial killers, not like these guys I described in this, this video or last video, the spree killers who are on the run. No, that's not the same thing. Well, unless we find out they had previous murders. But talking about these lone wolf kind of serial killers, like Ted Bundy kind of thing, right? And they're very common as common but there there's thousands of them now in the in the history books so I'm thinking what is their false self like a serial killer what false self did they develop that they're a serial killer and then I'm like dude they develop the false self that they're a serial killer in other words when you become a serial killer you know you're becoming a serial killer you know, we tend to think that these people are crazy, right? They're sick. They have a, a problem where they can't control their sexual, aggressive, violent impulses, and they want to kill. I'm thinking, no, that's part of it. Okay. But in the grander scheme of things, in the grander schema of their mind, they develop this persona that was going to be a winner, that was going to be all-powerful, they said, I'm going to be a serial killer. So they're feeding us with their narcissism, you see. We're standing back looking at these people and saying, oh my God, they are just so special right there, so mind-blowingly sick, I can't believe it. Wow. That's what they want. I mean, maybe not all. Maybe not all. And maybe not any. It's just my theory. But I said, well, that makes sense. That's how they're expressing their narcissism. You see? It's like they want to get that narcissistic supply. And if you're a complete nobody in life and you're a loser and you're an empty and you have no hopes and no dreams and you basically have low emotional affect and etc. I mean, what way can you do it? Well, that's a, that's a pretty easy, good way to do it. All of a sudden, you're going to be a, a, a star of sorts. You're going to be known to the world, and everyone's going to be shocked at how. It's like when Trump tries to be more and more evil, right? He tries to shock people with proposals that he never follows up on, but just to get people's ire. Or like my father said, it's better to have people fear you than to like you. That's what these serial killers do, you know? So we shouldn't think that they are 
We didn't give the label serial killers to them. That's their false persona that they adopted. They said, I'm going to be a serial killer. I'm going to be known as... Well, I mean, they don't choose their nickname, usually, but... Let me check my notes. There's so many things I think about that uh, along these lines that I, I never even talk about most of these. I'll tell you, talk about that, that kid who killed his uh, kid again. He's 21, so he was from India. His parents immigrated here and they sent him to school and they had great hopes and he couldn't fulfill and he killed them. But it's not the first time. There was a girl who did the exact same thing. She was Asian and... Uh, her name is Jennifer Pan. And there's several uh, videos or uh, documentaries on her. Uh, tiger parents. Girl kills her tiger parents. Same thing. They expected her to be a pianist, a figure skater. She just wasn't into it. And, was, and they were both lying about going to school. And they weren't. That's just weird, man. You know, like, especially because I can tell you that. I never lied about not going to school. When I skipped school, I would just tell my parents I skipped school. Or I would lie, but if they caught me, okay, I skipped school. Like, And I think it's because I was the black sheep, because my, my, father, my brother, who was brought up, the golden child in the exact same family with the exact same parents, he would fight. He would fight to keep his lies and his faults hidden much more much more and that's why he didn't engage in them see that's the thing that's what makes him more of a borderline than a narcissist is because he didn't engage in things that he would have to cover but if something happened he would try to cover it of course I believe a narcissist and a psychopath they engage in things that they know that they're going to have to be lying about it's like they have double lives they have a false persona it's a very it must be a very uncomfortable way to live to exist um, I can relate I can relate by the way to narcissism in one way I finally figured it out I was thinking, well maybe I can relate to it like well have I developed a false self and I said yeah I have in some way I wear a baseball cap when I go outside um, mostly for the sun at first but now because people don't see me with my bald head well I wear a baseball cap pretty much all the time when I'm outside and once when I couldn't find my cap I was like holy shit I really want that thing. Like, I feel naked without it. And I was thinking, oh, you know what? Maybe that's how narcissists feel about everything. You know what I mean? Because I only built up this small little false persona. And not even... I mean, really the true reason was because I get hit. I mean, I, you know I can't stand the heat. So I need the hat. So at the end of the day, that's why I did it. But had I did it because I was ashamed of being bald, I suppose, and then, well, it's not the same thing. But you see what I mean? When I, when I realized I did, when I realized that I wanted the hat, for, not for reasons for the sun, but reasons because there are probably people who don't know they don't have a hair around here. So I mean, I, you know, I've been wearing the hat for what two, three years now since I was homeless. I needed it. I got used to it. So I was like very interesting. I'm like, if it wasn't my hat, but if it was my whole life, my whole backstory, oh my. That's just very, very miserable. You, then you can't go out without it. No wonder they kill people to hide their stories. I mean, I have the option. You know, if it's a whole story your whole life, and you're married, and they think you have a whole... I mean, my God. These people dig themselves holes. It's like the narcissist doesn't dig, digs themselves a hole with their reputation, and the psychopath digs themselves a hole with their crimes. And a borderline, we don't dig our holes by, by burying our bridges, cutting our bridges, burning our bridges. I think that's the way we do it. I mean, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, I have one other thing, guys. My friend, the psychopath, got out of jail. Did I tell you guys this? I don't know. I'll tell you again. Uh, every day, you know, guys, this, this day would be so happy. My brother loved his birthday. I mean... Fuck, remember he'd call me on, I'd call him at 12.01, which is 37 minutes ago. I'd be speaking to my brother right now for sure, 100%. Well, no, he's married, so it's, it's true. <laughs> I forgot, he got married 
years before he died, so it's possible he'd be with his wife, but probably not. They'd call him and he'd pick up on his cell phone. What was I saying then? What was I saying? Uh, fuck. I forgot, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave you guys this. This is funny. I don't know why I wrote this one down. I needed a black t-shirt, so I go to the dollar store. I thought maybe they have one. And they only had one, but it said, World's Best Dad. And I said, you know what? Maybe I should buy it. I, did, I didn't buy it, but I said, maybe I should wear it. Maybe it's all I need. Maybe it'll make me feel great about myself. If I'm the world's best dad, I don't know. Well, I just wanted to do a psychological experiment on myself and see how people perceive me. I thought that would be very funny. I, I didn't do it, but I don't think I can. You see, that I don't have that in me. That That's really a psychopath's fucking thing. Like, only they can do something so immoral because that's immoral isn't it to wear a t-shirt world's greatest dad and you're not even a dad ah uh, boy oh my god guys I don't want to be alone tonight man I swear I feel so fucking depressed my brother man you know I was wondering maybe he died I don't know 